You could tell it was a two if you need, you know, but um, he was uh, completely off track because that had no relationship to the idea that you could scan it maybe with four lines and then figure out what the characters were. And also, um, people didn't understand that uh, when you scan something, it's noisy and, you know, things aren't aligned and, you know, you got you to gotta have a lot of different ways to recognize the character and you have to bring, to do a good job, you have to bring the context into effect and all kinds of other things and that's, you know, a lot of problems that were, that people tried to solve analytically are being solved today by what's called big data. If you have a lot of data, in other words, if you've seen a lot of scans of characters and you have a quick way to ask, have I seen this before? That's a d darn good way to do it, actually. But it takes a lot of memory. In those days, no one had a lot of memory. So, you know, most people misunderstood that problem. And a lot of the ideas people had were crackpot. So anyway, um, I'm not wandering too much, maybe. No, I was going to just uh, ask if you could tell the story, because uh, I thought it was really quite a striking one, about how free press finally caught on. You told me a story yesterday about U.S. News and World Report and yeah. and the other magazines. Um, and then later when we were talking with Art Dorinsky, he added on to your story with the story about how Tron was uh, going to be on the cover of Newsweek and Time. Do you remember that part? And no, I don't. That's okay. a part I don't remember. Okay. But you can <laughs> tell me the part about how free press finally caught on and, and what, you know, how that whole came about. Well, um, you mean when, okay, that's... You made your first sale to U.S. News and World Report? I think we, our first, is our, was it U.S. News and World Report? Person. Let's call it U.S. News. Yeah. Okay. And then what happened was there was some cover story that uh, either Time or Newsweek got a scoop by borrowing that equipment for getting out the plates for one story, which caused a lot of us to get a lot of sales subsequent to that. Do you, does that ring a bell to you? I remember well, this happening. People cooperated uh, really in communication with one another every day. Uh, the guy at U.S. News pushed us in front of time for a long while. I, uh, I don't remember any uh, other triggering activity, just uh, slow, slow procurement processes. Well, what I remember you told us yesterday was that U.S. News and World Report was using the system, and Time and Newsweek knew about it, or uh, Newsweek had heard about it, and they... Uh, one, one of the two scooped the other once. By borrowing it. Yeah. But that's what I heard. Well, Newsweek, you were there. Newsweek also used the same facility. So they could very well have been the ones who were most aware of it. Uh, in fact, uh, for years, it was the same machine that was turning out both Newsweek and U.S. News and World Report, the same physical machine. So Time, Time Magazine ended up being uh, coupled in the home office and uh, uh, at least eight printing sites around the world. But eventually, how many of those did we sell, those systems? Uh, well, for magazines in general, we probably had 30, 30 machines. Uh, okay. Our, our economic had four of them. That was, that was the FR-80, right? No, that would have been the video phone. 
Okay. Yeah, the uh, all the print press work was done at the video house. There were okay. extensions beyond the typesetter that we bought from RCA. When we got it from RCA, uh, they were able to handle a scanned line drawing with no photograph by any means. Uh, so all of that was done really with Bob Harley, work on the half line. Yeah, I mean, well, that was a revolutionary thing that we did, which is to be able to produce, you know, when you print in color, it's done by having little dots that vary in size. In other words, uh, newspapers or magazines, when they print in color, they use this thing called halftone, where the dot frequency is constant, but the dot sizes change. And there's an optical way to generate it. Uh, so you can make a plate from a photograph uh, optically. But what Bob Waller f figured out, and doing it in color, uh, I remember people, when Bob decided he was going to solve that problem so our computer system could generate halftones, I remember some guy telling me, that'll never work. <laughs> because they, they, they saw it as some kind of magic. They have a kind of screen it was they had some way they just made it happen optically when they did printing where they uh, would separate the image into colors and then they would print the three which at that time was to basically have a grading that was at the right angle and the uh, grayscale image going across that ended up making dots that were uh, uh, might have uh, black dots in the very colors or so they so they would print the red dots, the blue dots, and the green dots, and you know, if, and you would see it as an image. And they did the clever things by having the dots at 45 degrees instead of 90 degrees, and little things like that that helped. Uh, and uh, what Bob figured out is how to do have our machine make that kind of. Uh, image for the printing plates, which had to be, you had to print the red, the blue, and the green separately, if that's, if they were additive. With their, I don't even know what the three colors are. They, What are the three colors in printing? PMYK. Okay. PMYK. Yeah, PMYK. Okay. So, I have a story problem, and let's see okay. if we can go ahead. How to, uh, solve this. <clears throat> the um, folklore that I heard uh, was that the uh, U.S. News and World Report was using the system, and uh, Newsweek had a news scoop uh, that they didn't have time to get onto the front, uh, didn't have time to switch over in time unless they went to your system, and they were able to, to use the same system that U.S. News and World Report used and, and scoop time is that I right? That. That's, it seems like a might have been it. Yeah, because they had access to that machine and they could very, very well use it. But I, I don't remember the specific of this. But I, what, I rem what I remember is there was this one event where one of the two magazines got a cover story out one week, the other didn't, and that resulted in our getting a set of sales. That's what I remember. And to me, it was a, I thought it was a funny thing. So that's why I remember it. But it's perfectly possible. But um, I wouldn't go into court and be able to give oh, you a precise well, definition of what think happened. I don't anyone's going to go back and uh, try to scrutinize that. But the reason uh, the I, uh, that part of the story is important for me is because Art Drinsky tells the story about when they're doing Tron, and Newsweek and Time both want to put Tron on the cover. And they prepared all the artwork, art has it all done, it's been shipped to them, and at the last minute, Alexander Haig resigns, and they both switch to Alexander Haig instead of Tron because they have the I system and they can, they can easily switch and do all their printing and not miss their deadline. So it comes full circle that yeah. IIIs uh, Superior equipment actually prevents Triple I from getting 
the both both the cover <laughs> and the, the Newsweek and Time. First, so that part is a true story. So, if, by so, so I them, see. Oh, you want to hook those two stories together? Right. Because it, I think they're both true. I think, I think so they, yeah. So because I, I do remember, I don't remember the exact details, but I remember, Al, actually you telling me how, uh, you know, uh, this great thing that happened and now we're going to sell all the weekly magazines, you know, and so on. Something like that. <laughs> so could you give me, the, you know, you recall talking to Al about this and, you know, whether it's all exactly precise, who knows? It's part of the mythology. And I, and I don't remember the date or what the event was. It no. doesn't, doesn't matter. But, but we know what the Tron date was because that's the, that's the, uh, Later. the, the punchline of yeah, the right. story. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a good so, story. So can you give me something that I can use for the front part? Do you, re you recall a conversation that went something about the New York News World Report? I can give it to you. Tell the story as you remember it. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can do it again. Is that what you want? Yeah. The one, the same one I told you. Okay. But give it to me uh, in the you know Reader's Digest summary, uh, summarized way. Okay. Okay. We had uh, delivered a system that enabled uh, you know the computer to set up. Um, printing plates that could be used to print magazines, front the cover and other pages and color and so on and so forth. And uh, we were getting started in that field. And uh, we had uh, equipment running. And uh, so what happened is that some news event happened. And what I recall is that it was like either Time or Newsweek, one of the very majors, borrowed or used equipment they didn't normally to ch switch covers at the last moment while their competitor, the other one of the two majors, which was Time and, and uh, Newsweek, I guess, and uh, the other one missed it because, and the result was that we delivered more, I think, to both of those. You know, basically, we had the market because um, that one event showed the advantage of being able to do things quickly from computer information to printing plates and so on. Is that good enough? Well, as you look back, uh, U.S. News, that was the first one to buy, had the least urgent requirement. U.S. News was more of an in-depth analysis of the news. It wasn't really dealing with headlines. And so the, the first machine was, in effect, underutilized. Uh, and it was Newsweek and Time who uh, were in a fight for readership based on having the latest story. And Newsweek would have had access and, and made use of it as it remembers. Yeah. is to try to make the history of computer graphics be the story of computer graphics. So that's why I'm mean, indulging your... Yeah, you know, yeah. This. But we only remember so much, and we may not remember enough to make that story exact. Good. Let's try it one more time. This time, uh, give me the, just the, the key points uh, in, in whatever way you're comfortable. Because I, I think you can do it a little bit better. That's Okay, <clears throat> I'll try again. What I recall is that we had delivered one system and uh, it was uh, kind of being, becoming known in the industry that uh, this was possible, but you know, I don't think too many people realized what the utility of it was. Uh, 
what was possible, of course, is that you generate things on a computer, you get your pictures on a computer, and then you generate the plates that you're going to use to print. Those images are done by computer and uh, so on. And one of the beauties of this is that you could transmit the pictures to another such unit electronically over the phone lines, in essence, instead of what they used to do, which is they would generate the plates in New York and hire a bunch of private jets to fly them to the printers around the country. Uh, and so uh, what I recalled is this incident that happened where we had one unit that was in use by U.S. News and World Report, and one of the two magazines, either Time or Newsweek, managed to scoop the others by borrowing the equipment in order to uh, um, get the plates out and be able to... Uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Ah. <laughs>